Mrs. Momo. Mr. Moncur, do come in. So that's what all the fuss was about. She certainly looks married to me. For three years, sensational tales and growing rumour had surrounded Hera Ngungu. In July 1929, supported by her old friend Frank Moncur, she was finally persuaded to tell her story to Mr J.R. Sheehan of the Auckland Sun in Fokatane. I really do appreciate your coming, Mr Ngungu. Uh, there have been plenty of reports, of course, I presume you I never went in any canoe. I told Frank here. But they also said she married a Maori chief. Ewa was a fine looking man, but only an old gum digger like the rest of us, eh? But before that, uh, when you were living in Lepperton with your family. She can't remember. My sister told me that's all. They called me Queenie in those days, but. My real name was Caroline. She showed me the certificate and the photographs. But I was the 13th child of 17, but some of them died. A lot of children died in those days. Even Pakehas. May be so endued with heavenly virtue and everlastingly rewarded by thy mercy, O blessed Lord God, who dost live and govern all things, world without end. Amen. Amen. Name this child. This one's Queenie. Uh, Caroline. All right, Mother? <laughs> Caroline, I baptize thee in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. They told me I was my father's favorite, but I wouldn't know about that. They have tried to make me remember, but it's no use. And what would it matter anyway? Perhaps it was Utu. Vengeance for disturbing the Tipuna. Good to see you. You have been told before, this land is tapu. What would happen if we were to dig in a park here, cemetery? The railway line must go through. We knew the Manutahi are buried here. Yeah. Those days of war are over. Good riddance, I say. And I say, this is a place of tapu. We are here to warn you. The people are angry. Ah, come now. What can they do to me, eh? <laughs> You don't remember... Nothing. Nothing at all. I only remember work. Always work. It was shock. Well, just think, a child only eight years old. Terrible. And now I'm 64. There were good things, too. But very different from what you could have expected. Different. I know of nothing that's different. You said before there was no canoe. Mm. We were digging gum at Kaipara. Heavy, heavy work. From first light in the morning to late at night. I never even knew what they wanted it for. Vanish, they say. A lot of backbreak and heartache for a little bit of varnish. Oh. 
Mano moi. E tu, ko te ro mangere. A te mahi e kai koe. Ko ine yo nak. Ana, e kari. Te no mangere te ko te ro na. Kare tanga ki e nei mahi. Ka ti a koe. Ana, mari a teni. Tu pato to hare, kai ta hai nia koe ia. Hare, hare. Ia tere. Mori o mai teta hi peke prao. Me a koe koe i te mahi pakeke. Me he me ka mahi pera a koe. Ka kai ai. Ka o rai tātou te ui. Muri ake tēnā taunga noa i o hokoe. Kai? 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 Mahi? Mahi? Nga. Mahi. Kahi. Kahiru. Kahiru. Ai. Kahiru. Ai. Pia. 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 Ana. E tukirunga. Mahi. 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 Pai. Pai tonu e hine. Ana, me mahi. At first, my feet bled all the time, you know, with the digging. Often, the others would work in twos and threes, but I was on my own, always on my own. But I learned, and my feet grew harder. Soon I was carrying a 60-pound sack of gum down to the storekeeper, 10 miles. And then back again with a great sack of flour. He was a Pākehā. Yet he never thought me any different. Still, plenty of delis on the fields, though, eh? <laughs> but I told you, there were good times. At night, we used to sit around the fire and scrape the gum. And then we would throw it onto the fire and it would blaze up and light the whole sky. And then somebody would start telling a tale and somebody else would try to do better. <laughs> and there was a lot of laughing. Plenty of food too. Eels and pigeons. Plenty of wild pig. Oh yes. Yeah. And everybody smoking. <laughs> I could never abide tobacco. Horrible stuff. Hard strong people though. They had to be. All different tribes. They all had their own stories too. Everybody worked. Everybody got their fair share. Wouldn't do for the Pākehā, but I sometimes think they could learn from the Māori way.